Hello everybody, and sorry about that. Hello everybody. Hope you're having a wonderful day. And this is lesson number what is it? Thirty. If I'm not wrong. This is lesson number thirty in our dive into the wonderful world of music theory. And today I've got a slightly out of the ordinary. Sorry, you'd have to excuse my dog. I've got a slightly out of the ordinary um, lesson today, where I want to talk about triads. Uh, so far we've been talking about major minor scales, degrees of scales and things like that and we are eventually I think right after this we're going to talk about key signature which is in culmination of everything we learned something that's very 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 important so yes we should probably wait until that happens but for now we're going to be talking about triads hmm. so now what are triads well we've learned about the major scale right We've learned about the minor scale the, the, and chromatic scale as well, but I won't go to that, right? So these are two major types of scales that we've learned. A triad is a collection of the first, third, and fifth pitches in a scale the first the third and the fifth now these are very 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 special and I'll explain but before I do let's let's say start a construction triad so let's take the C major scale right C major goes C D E F G A B and we come back to C right C, D, E, F, G, A, B, C. That's the C major scale. You can double check it with the blueprint if you want. Now, based on our definition up here, what I want you to pause the video and think about what would be our C major triad. So, I think you've done that, and now I'm going to tell you. So, I've been using you know numbers till now, but I should point out that in you know, and by convention in music, we use um, not numbers, but we use numer Roman numerals. So, so now I want to be using Roman numerals, and I suggest you do as well. Um, it's quite important that we both use Roman numerals because this is the jargon you'll find. You won't, you'll really find someone writing fifths, but you'll always find someone writing fifths like this or fifths like that, right? So it's yeah, that's just the convention. You don't have to, but it's better that you do this because that's the way everyone else writes it. It'll help you understand other people's work better as well. Regardless, the first degree of the first pitch in the scale is obviously the tonic which is C so great for us now the third one look at remember Kachak net triad so first third and fifth is E and the fifth one is as you might imagine G now what's so special about these why do, what are triads why do, okay we know what they are what, what is what's so special about them but these three notes the first third and fifth sound extremely consonant that means that they're very pleasing to the ear when they played together in some fashion they complement each other very very well and so there, there are reasons why this happened uh, due, um, harmonic reasons why this happened but I don't I don't think it's best to get into that as far beyond the scope of this video but for now you can you don't have to take my word for it you can um, you can listen to it so this is C by itself if I add an E, it sounds like this. If I add a G, it sounds extremely consonant, doesn't it? It sounds pleasing. And it they complement each other. And there it's it's an extremely strong combination. And this this when I use a major scale and since I'm starting on C the root, it uh, this is called C major triad. The color C E and G is a C major triad. And once again, triads, why are they useful? They're extreme, they're, they sound extremely consonant. And i give this little bit of information right here. So when you, you can do many things with a triad, right? Triad by itself is just a collection of notes. What you do with them is different. So when you play a triad together, when you play it all at once, and I don't want to get into harmony here. I haven't really talked about harmony. I didn't have intention to talk about harmony in this particular lesson either. But you can play two pitches at one time. I'm sure you can. Imagine that I can play two keys on the piano at one time. I'm sure you can imagine, right? So if I play them all at the same time, 
that's called a chord right so if i play c e and g at the same time i played the c major chord right i use the c major triad and i play the c major chord when i play it simultaneously it's a new word which we was recorded so i play the c major chord i play them all together and you can see the sounds very nice it sounds unambiguous it sounds consonant it sounds pleasing etc etc i can also play them so that's one way to play them all together right another way to play them is one after the other just play them in a sequence and that sounds like this not too bad either if i put it into a pattern maybe something like this and when we do something like that it's called an arpeggio so let me just write it down cuz i'm using some weird words when you play a triad simultaneously all the notes of a triad at the same time it's a chord so if i play a c major triad all of them all of them at the same time it is a c major chord if i play them one after the other then it's called an arpeggio and arpeggio can have multiple patterns right you can do it in multiple ways so i could do an arpeggio just or i could have it go on like back and forth or i could have something like this or i could have or anything and these are a very important part of music because you find them everywhere chords are everywhere you take um chords are everywhere arpeggios are everywhere in classical music and modern music they're everywhere and they all are based on the idea of triads which are the first um third and fifth notes of the scale and they go very well together and they take my word for it there's a reason why there's a scientific and musical reason why this goes together but for now i'd like you to just observe the fact as i played for you that they do go very well together and i can display for example arpeggios a famous way that i use is maybe one of mozart's piano sonatas so can you see how the arpeggios are bringing so much color and texture to the piece if i play it without the arpeggios it sounds like this pretty cool and now i bring in the arpeggios and it sounds like this so as you can see when i the minute i bring in the arpeggios it adds so much more color it adds so much more texture and in, in this case arpeggios also help very rhythmically and give a very rhythmic feel to the piece it's, it's so and i can also use chords for example in the piece in this without chords it would sound like this so so for which chords it sounds like this so as you can see both chords and arpeggios um really bring lots of color texture depth to the music and they sound amazing they sound very consonant they sound very pleasing and they all are based on triads which are the first third and fifth note of a scale but anyways um we won't discuss the major triad let me do one more major triad so this is the c major triad well let's take a g major scale so if i want to do the g major triad i have to take the g major scale and the g major scale is g a b c d b e, f oh sorry about that f sharp and g so if i were to take the first third and fifth note of this scale i'll take g i'll take b and i'll take d so it'll be one is g Three is B and five is D, and once again these sound extremely consonant together, and that makes a G major triad. I can play it as a chord. Once again, that means if I play them all together, or I can play them as an arpeggio, whichever one works. Now I don't want you to get into chords and arpeggios too much, but I do want to introduce the idea of a triad here because these the first third and fifth notes are very very important. Notes of any scale. Now we've talked about major triad so far. I want to talk about a minor triad. So just like we can have a major scale, if I take the first, third, and fifth notes of a minor scale, I get a minor triad. How about maybe A minor? So A minor is A, B, C, D, E, F, G, and come back to A. I take the first, third, and fifth. One, two, three. And I write them down. So first is A, 
third is C and fifth is D. And once again, this sounds it sounds different. It sounds very minor, but they still sound they complement each other. Do you notice? So I play each one individually. Now I play them all together in the form of a chord. Or I play them in, ar in an arpeggio. Or whatever pattern I use, right? The sound, it, it, once again, it brings, they complement each other immensely. And so th that works for major triads, it also works for minor triads. And major makes, um, uh, and as you might say, because majors come from major scales, major triads come from major scales which are happy and joyful. Um, a major triad, when played as a or as a, um, as a chord, sounds happy and joyful. Sounds happy and joyful, right? Whereas the minor triad sounds kind of dark, tragic, and sad. So you can imagine. But and yeah, so the first, third, and fifth notes really complement each other no matter which scale you take. There are other scales as well, and you take the first, third, and fifth from them, and they also form a triad and they sound very good. So, I thought I introduced triads today. I'm not, they're not extremely relevant to the current, you know, stream of current block we're doing, which is about, you know, major and minor scales and key signature, but, um, uh, and, but I, I did thought it, this is the best place to introduce them. So I, I just introduced them. You don't have to pay them too much credence. They become very important later on in music, especially when you when chords and arpeggios and harmony come into play. play first, third, and fifth, and then the fourth and sixth are very important for harmony. But for now, I just wanted to introduce the concept of having the first, third, and fifth uh, pitches there and chords and arpeggios. But yeah, I, I just felt like introducing it. I think this is the right place uh, in your music theory journey to introduce it. That being said, hopefully, you took something valuable away from this lesson hopefully you learned something interesting and you found it a little bit enjoyable thank you so much for listening to me so far and i will see you next lesson bye